Hi everyone. It is springtime and Adam and I have been plant shopping. We originally just wanted to buy a few plants, but then we un ended up accidentally buying a few more, as you can see in the background. So we're quite excited about what we found. Some of the Japanese gardening plants are really very hard to find here. And I'm excited to run you through of all the plants we have. I'm going to talk you through the plants we bought and I will start with this first section here. All these plants you can see here are Japanese azaleas and what is visible right away is the different leaf color and the leaf, different leaf texture and this is something I sometimes talk about in videos and here you have a perfect comparison. So you see that these for example have dark green leaves but the new leaves are a light green. Here you can see that they have a dark green but have larger leaves if you compare it to those. And then the other ones over there, they have also quite dark green leaves actually, even darker than these uh, and also smaller leaves. So um, it's really personal taste, what you prefer and personal preference. Um, we chose these azaleas based on the color because we do not like mixing azalea color so much. We have certain sections in the garden where we have white ones, where we have pink ones and where we have purple ones. And we were looking for a few more of each of those colors. So the ones you can see here, the first two are purple azaleas. This one has a lot of blossoms already. This one is still to come out and this one is a little bit larger has a bit um, like thicker branches than these ones here. Those are all the pink blooming ones and they have these beautiful uh, blossoms and pretty much all of them are already open at this time. So plants in nurseries are usually a little bit further than plants that grow in the garden that's become because they come from the um, nurseries and um, from the greenhouses and there it's usually warmer. So our azaleas in our garden, they are not open yet at this time of the year. Moving on to the white ones. Here we have six white ones in this medium size. And then actually over there on the other side, we have five, I think it is, of the same, but in a larger size. Also, those are still closed. They are even more closed than the ones there and they will open uh, soon. And then the last azaleas here are the ones we're most excited about this year. They are Satsuki azaleas, which we have never seen here in any nursery. And we do go to many nurseries when we're looking for plants. So I'm really, really pleased. They are, as you can see, quite small. I'm coming a bit closer. You see they are still very young plants and those leaves they are rather long and thin and the green is like a well it's like a mid-tone green so something in between a bright green and a dark green. They are supposed to be blooming in pink. I'm not sure if they will have blossoms this year yet they look still very small I can't see any blossoms coming out anywhere but we're so excited to have Satsuki azaleas finally in our garden and the cultivar name of those is Corin I'll put it also in the description box down below the other Japanese azaleas um, most of the time in nurseries here they do not come with a cultivar name so I can um, link the cultivar names of the ones we have in the garden but on those unfortunately it just says it's a white azalea or a pink azalea or a purple azalea. Why but are we so excited about these particular azaleas? We always wanted to have satsuki azaleas. They are typically or often used for bonsai actually and I always wanted those and I never found them here. Apparently though the nursery said they had them every year Maybe we just never saw them because they are so small and we're usually looking for larger azaleas. So we'll see. Um, but it's very, very exciting. Okay, so we are very excited. Yes, we, we are. are very excited. Yes. Good, okay. <laughs> right, moving on. Here we have Japanese hollies. So those here and those two. And they are two different kinds. And I will put them next to each other so you can see that this one is a bit darker in color. This one has a lighter green color. And also the leaves on this one very small. And here the leaves, you see they get 
a bit larger. So there are also for the Japanese hollies a lot of different cultivars and uh, colors of the leaves and shapes of the leaves. These were already pruned, so that's fine for us. We usually buy the, the pruned ones that have the shape, even though I typically do not keep the rounded shape. But um, for a start, this is good. And these are smaller plants, actually. Uh, they will grow out. However, Japanese holly grows actually quite slow, so it will take a little bit for them to get a bit bigger. Now, moving on to those three here. These are Japanese Andromeda. And here you can see uh, the red new tips of this kind. This is the uh, mountain fire. And you see the new leaves that come out have this dark red, beautiful color. And the other leaves are a dark green. And we have two of those. And this one here is also coming out in red. This one is called Carnival, this cultivar. But the leaves you can see are variegated, so they have white edges. And this one grows a bit more compact than this one here. So that's those. Next, we're coming to the pond plant section, which is this section here. So we're not really looking for pond plants anymore, but some of the plants are only available in that section where we live, at least. Let's start with these. This is called ball rush, and it has a really bright green color. And it stays at pretty much the height as it is. We have those at the big pond, actually. They're growing between the rocks. So these kind of plants, many of them you can grow in water or also in uh, water or in, in areas right next to the water, for example, or wherever the soil stays moist. So that's this one. And then, and I was talking about that on the spring garden tour, we found horsetail. So horsetail is not always easy to find. As I mentioned, I think on the spring garden tour also, that first of all, you only find it in the pond plant section. And pond plants here means they are only available from about mid to end April time until maybe July time, or maybe even just the end of June. So it's a quite short window to get those. And we have been um, searching for them. And most, we were went to several nurseries and many of them just have a few plants. So we took them all <laughs> this time around and we will see if they get some more. But for a start, this is good because we need quite a lot actually. So I'll show you one as a close up. You see, this is a typical size you find here. To compare to the ones that we already grow, they are still young plants. You can see the new ones coming out, but uh, they will grow uh, larger. So they can grow up to one meter, even one meter fifty. Ours, I would say, grow to about a meter. They are technically water plants, so they can grow in shallow water areas, even though I have never tried that in the past. Uh, we plant them just in soil, but it's important that the soil stays moist. And then also we got some of a smaller size. So that would be a smaller size plant. This is the same plant. It's just this one is younger than this one. So you see it's all thinner and a bit shorter still. And so we're excited. We're about those. not putting these in the pond, are we? No, we, we are planting those along the house wall uh, up there in the shade and to hide the uh, where the render stops really. So this is the plan for those. Very exciting. Stay tuned for that video. Yes, we'll have um, in fact separate videos about the azalea planting, about the horse cell planting and a few other planting videos uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Now moving on to this little section here. Here we just got some uh, Irish moss. It's also called star moss here. So this is not a moss, this is a normal plant, a ground cover that grows very low. Um, it can be invasive, but not necessarily. We here did never have any problem with it. And it builds tiny little white flowers in, uh, in early summer. And this is good to use as a replacement for moss, where you have a lot of sun, the moss has hard times growing. It does seed out though, so it will pop up uh, here and there. And then we have this one here. This one is called, and I need to double check, is uh, Scleranthus. We actually never had that before. This is also a low growing uh, ground cover plant. So we will also put that in some sunny areas where moss just doesn't grow. So that's the first time for this one. Exciting to plant something we never planted before.
Okay, and then moving on to the last section here. Here we have two Portuguese laurels. We have a lot of those in the garden and we needed uh, two to fill in certain spaces, which you will most likely also see in upcoming videos. And they have a, I would say that's probably a medium size. You can get them smaller as well here typically or even as very large ones. So this is, this is a good size to, uh, to start and to transport also in the car. Okay, and then coming to the very last section of uh, conifers. Let's start with this one here. This is a, uh, unfortunately just labeled as pine. So I'm assuming it could be a mugo pine, but I'm not sure because it doesn't have a proper name and doesn't have a cultivar name either. This happens quite a lot here. This is a, um, a smaller size. It has, you see, a little trunk, um, but it will grow so that you actually can't see that trunk. So it will grow more in the shape of a, a bush really. And the other smaller size pines we grow are mugo pines. Some of them did not have a cultivar name when we bought them. Others are um, pomilio mugo pines. And yeah, I, as I said, I unfortunately do not know what this one is. It would be good to know. This happens here quite a lot that plants aren't labeled by cultivar actually. However, it looks really nice. We like the lighter green color of the needles and it has a really nice and compact shape. I don't think it has a home yet but we'll find a very nice home for it. And finally, something we have never ever seen in a garden center here. So we were actually looking for a Japanese black pine. Didn't find one, no one has one. But we found this and I'm so excited about this. We took even two of those. These are Pinus paviflora, that's the Japanese white pine. The cultivar name on this one is Ryuju. And we're so excited to have Japanese white pines in our garden. They already have a home. They are still quite small, but Japanese white pines can grow from somewhere from 15 meters to 25 meters, depending on the environment they're growing in, but they grow to a proper tree if you let it. Otherwise they can be pruned by just shortening these new shoots. You see they're coming out now, so it would be about time to prune them if you wanted to. For those, we will not uh, prune them this year. We typically, when we plant new plants, we let them just be after planting for a year, or maybe even two, until they are settled and established, and then prune them. So very excited about those. They're very uh, soft when you touch them, the needles, and you see they have this, they have a, a bluish touch in their color, but also you can see a bit of a whitish color actually when looking at the needles. So as mentioned, the, the planting, we'll do it in separate videos. Uh, talk also about the specific plants in that video that we're planting to give you some more information. And so stay tuned for those. And this brings me to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.